Alex, and your partner there, Sarah, likes to hang out at the mall. Now, what do you do while you're just hanging at the mall, Sarah? Well, check out guys and spend money. Check out the dudes and spend the cash. Your cash or like parents' cash? Mine. No, oh, okay. <laughs> We now return you to your regularly scheduled program, already in progress. Let's go back to my timeline here for a second, because I want to talk to you guys about this time. So again, this is February the 23rd through the 24th. And 23rd was the day that all this occurred. And then he died anywhere between the evening of the 23rd to the morning of the 24th. So they said that on the 23rd, I found this so freaking interesting majority of phone calls during the day were placed and received or to Brian Boone starting at 11.52 hours, which is 11.52 a.m. and continuing until 7.20 p.m. Why does she call him just nonstop? I, you know, I don't know. Is she calling Lucas? Is she calling her son? I just did. Mm -hmm. That's just I don't know. It seems like a lot of freaking phone calls. I think she's talking to Brian a lot. So we've got timestamps. We've got solid timestamps with those receipts. Why Sarah left out that there was two trips to the Publix, I have no idea. Did, was she so wasted by 5 p.m. that she forgot that they went to Publix? No, again? she was trying to downplay it. I, I think she was putting out feelers of like, what's going to make me look the best? And because, you know, she didn't say I blame it till the out on the alcohol until she's like halfway through her second interrogation. Um, I know you've said this before. I know everybody has said this before, but just to reaffirm in or voluntary intoxication, which means you willingly put a substance into yourself is not a defense for anything in the state in of Florida. Florida. Yep. Oh, the other thing I forgot to tell you is there was a Samsung phone also in the suitcase. Mm hmm. That might have been that, George's that just had Wi-Fi on it. It's possible. Just had Wi-Fi? Yeah, so, like, people can have a phone and not have cellular service, but they'll be able to pick up a Wi-Fi connection. And they do that a lot. It oh, I didn't know that. I thought you didn't have service. You didn't have service. Uh, no, you can, like, people who use Facebook Messenger, for example... Um, they can just go to like McDonald's and pick up Wi-Fi and then they can use Facebook. Well, that's got to be the case or Sarah's lying because she said in her interrogation in the police station that he, he used her phone. He didn't have a phone. He used her phone, which he did. He used her phone to call. That's her. These are timestamps. These in, that are in bold here. These are timestamps where at 724, he called his daughter Cookie. And then at 725, he called his other daughter. I guess he didn't get an answer. At 7.30, that's when he calls Juan, his brother. The call lasted four minutes and six seconds. And then at 8 p.m., he tried calling both his daughters again. Now, what I really found interesting here, you guys, was remember how Juan had said that while they were on the telephone, that Sarah was bitching and moaning about how she needed to call her brother and he mm -hmm. needed to get off the phone? Mm -hmm. She never called her brother. Mm -hmm. She never called her brother. Mm -hmm. It's not there. So, again, it's her. She's not getting attention, so she's going to do whatever she needs to do. To redirect attention to her. Now, exactly. what about this 11.46 p.m. Sarah called Brian? Whose phone was that deleted off of? This would probably be the perfect opportunity to remind you guys that if you are looking for something on this case, if you go to my channel homepage, Characters Productions, and you scroll down, is Sarah Boone case. There are one, two, three, four, five playlists here, all on Sarah Boone. The first one is everything I've ever done on Sarah Boone, right here under one playlist. The next one is all available police interviews. That includes Sarah and all the witnesses that they interviewed. Then we have the body cam footage. All of the body cam footage that has been made available to the public is on this playlist right here. And then, of course, we have the behavioral sheets of her IMS weekly reports. And then here we have the case docket dive series that I did starting all the way back from when she was first arrested. If by chance you are just coming in and you want to get caught up on this case, this right here is going to serve you well. 
Now, back to your regularly scheduled program. I have a couple follow-up questions that I wanted to ask Brian Boone. After looking through Sarah's call logs, I noticed that she called you on February 23rd, which would be um, the Sunday night at uh-huh. around 23.46 hours, which in that's military time, but in normal time, that's 11.46 hours. Do you yes. recall that phone call? I, I, I do, well, somewhat. I, I was asleep when she called. Um, uh, so she woke me up. I was half asleep when I was talking to her. Um, she did sound very inebriated. Okay. Um, I, I don't remember what all she said. I'm kind of used to her calling drunk late at night and things like that. So it, it didn't phase me as anything out of the ordinary. I basically just kind of got her off the phone and told her I'm going back to sleep and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. You said that she sounded inebriated like she was drunk? Yeah, I mean, it, she didn't sound like, I don't, it's hard. I was half asleep at the time. Um, I don't think I remember hearing any bad in the background or anything that would would have caused me concern but i don't really remember it that well okay but she was under the influence of alcohol based off of your knowledge of just knowing her and knowing when and when and when she's not under the influence yeah yeah as soon as i heard her start talking i i almost kind of just zoned out away from it because she says all kinds of nonsense when she does this late at night and just I was trying to get her off the phone so I could go back and say yes I'm sorry I'm on the phone right now. Are you ready? Okay. Do you remember her saying anything specifically about George? Um I don't think so. I don't really remember that. I I, I I don't remember much of the conversation, honestly. Okay. I appreciate it. Okay. And the phone conversation lasted for a little over two minutes, if I'm not mistaken? Uh, may have been, yeah. Okay. Um, and you said that it's kind of normal for her to call you late at night or just kind of whenever she's under the influence and she's kind of just yeah. babbling on and you have to try and get her off the phone. Yeah. If you don't yeah. It, it's, it's, a, it's a thing that happens. Okay. Okay, so you can't remember anything specific about what she may or may not have said, but she did sound inebriated. Does that sound correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and you couldn't uh, hear anything in the background? Um, uh, not that As far I as, like, remember, arguing or no. yelling or anything like that, you couldn't hear any of that? I don't think so. Okay. Do you know, do you know where she was located? Did she ever say? Um, I, I was assuming she was at home. Okay, but she didn't say. I mean, she she didn't have a lot of money. She didn't really go out anywhere, so I assumed she was at home. Okay, but you wouldn't know where in the house she may have been? No. Okay, she didn't give you that information. Okay. Not, not that I don't remember. It, I, it, it's possible she said something. I don't really remember, though. All right, is there anything else that you think is important for me to know about that phone conversation? Um, I don't think so. Does that typically, do you guys talk often? Like, in a day's Um, time, like, do you guys talk daily? More than I would like. Um, (laughs) Normally, um, anytime I'm calling her, it's to find out if she's actually going to be picking the child up like she's supposed to. Right. Um, uh, Like that next morning with me constantly calling. Um, Right. She'll call to talk to Lucas or... Sometimes when she's drunk or she needs me, she wants me to come pick her up because she's scared of George or, I mean, any number of different things. Okay. You're kind of like her call person. Like she. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's gotten very old over the last couple of years. So I, I've started to just kind of ignore what she's saying and just try to get her gone as soon as possible. Right. Because, I mean, honestly, for a long time, I tried to help her out, give her refuge, get away from him, and she just kept bringing him back, and I eventually just gave up on the situation, so. Right. That was Brian's phone. Sarah called Brian. He deleted the call? No. Well, I don't know if he deleted it or not. Somebody deleted it off their call history. I don't know who it was. Okay. I don't know about that. It's still in the phone. It does not matter. People 
You can think that you are deleting the contents of your cell phone, and I am here to tell you that is a lie. You are not deleting anything. So I don't think anything was said during this phone call, because I really believe that if he had heard what was going on, he, he would have done something. He would have done something, but at the same time, we don't know if George had passed at that point. So yeah. George, she could have called him and said, I got George in his suitcase. You know, something like that. And he's like, whatever, you know, and he hangs up on her. But we know that Vincent and Brandon, his roommate, from 1030 to 1115 was their timeline of when they hear the banging going down the stairs. But it has to be George in the suitcase. Exactly. So we know that it happened before 11, 12 p.m. So the whole timeline there of 1030 to 11 ish probably was when it occurred. And. Then she takes the first suitcase video at 11, 12 p.m. It lasts two minutes and three seconds long. And that's the one where it's upside down. Then I think it ended up inside, upside down maybe from coming down the stairs. Or is it too far away from the stairs? No, it's too far away from the stairs. Because look at the, yeah, if you look at the diagram, the stairs is on the other side of the room. So she had to have pulled him over and rolled him. That's another thing, too. If you think about that, think about this, guys. It doesn't help with our theory of the suitcase going down the stairs. But let's say the suitcase goes down the stairs and she, then she's going to pick it up by the handle where you pull it right with the wheels on it. Mm -hmm. So when she goes to lay it down, she probably set it up. She probably set it straight up and his body weight was on the opposite side. And that's why it fell over upside down. If you oh, think okay. about it, have you ever tried to hang a set up, set up something like that and it's too heavy and it goes one way? Yeah, yeah. So it's probably, that was probably gravity, but at that point, the suitcase was upside down. But in that time period between 11, 12 and 11, 23, you got that 11 minute time span where we don't know what was going on. We think, you know, we, we suspect she goes outside, smokes a cigarette, gets something to drink. We don't know. And then at 11, 23, the second suitcase video is taken, but it's only 22 seconds long. Then 23 minutes later, she's calling Brian. So she was still awake at that point. She tells the police that she went upstairs, waited for him for 30 minutes, and then went to sleep. But then she concedes that she passed out. Like The problem with Sarah is she just needed to stop talking because she was trying to dig herself out, and she just buried herself. Yeah. it's it, None of it. it her story is collapsing. It's collapsing. She does keep it her story together pretty much though some places in some places not all don't come for but me the, in the biggest problem the, the one thing that she does stay consistent on is it was an accident so she doesn't ever indicate that she was uh in fear for her life no, he never she threatened never to kill her was she in imminent danger the only time that she mentioned him hurting her was when they said he had all these scratches. When they talk, started talking about the Emmy report, and she's like, well, he hits me all the time. Or, he, you know, I have this and I have that mark on me. That's the only time she brought it up. It was like, oh, you've got, oh, you got that? Well, I got this. She Could wasn't going in with any kind of... fighting back. No, she I wasn't. I mean, they, you know, they did, somebody did say that they, they did fight with each other. But, you and know, I'm sure George did. wasn't, yeah, I'm sure George wasn't a saint, but I don't believe he he deserved to die. I just felt like I'm like, if I'm on the jury and I hear that she didn't immediately say to them in the interrogation room or in the car or on the 911 or that it was self-defense, then I'm just not going to believe her. Because if it goes against everything that she said that the 911 when they're on, when they first get on scene and what she said in the interrogation room following, it just, it, it goes against all of it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, if, if I'm a juror, it's like, I, this woman is not credible. She's not credible. There's no way if they see all of this, that they'll right. find her to be credible. So at 1125 AM was when Brian started calling her and he called until 1222 PM. There was four missed calls in between that time period. She had mentioned at some point that she thought she woke up around 11 but she said Brian calling her is what woke her up. So she didn't wake up till about probably 11, 25 ish. And then uh, at 1249, she answers the call from Brian, which is 32 seconds long, where she must have said, get your ass over here. George is dead. So from, I would say, 11, 25 a.m. to 1249 p.m., you've got an hour and what? 
How many minutes is that? 14. I don't know. My math is terrible. Yeah, hour, an hour and 14 minutes. What? It, really? She doesn't lay in bed that long. She can't lay in bed that long. Well, she did say she spent some time looking for him. So we'll give her 15 minutes on that. We'll give her how 15 far, minutes. I mean, how many places are there to look for him? Come on. I know. You it's know a little and if you yeah. wake up with a hangover, you need to go to the bathroom. She's got dogs that were sleeping with her that need to be let out. And she's going to want to smoke a cigarette. There is just no way that she stayed in the bed collecting her thoughts and getting ready for the day. I could see I mean, her smoking a cigarette in the bed, but I also see her having something to drink while she's doing it, especially after she's been drinking all night. She's got the cotton mouth. Right. But they're not supposed to smoke inside, so they were smoking outside. So that means she'd no, have to No, we've, we've debunked that theory. Oh, we've debunked, okay. We've, it's been debunked. And you know why? Because mm -hmm. somebody brought it up in the chat, and I didn't catch it either. That one video where she's coming out and and she has a cigarette with, in her hand. She yeah. was smoking inside that apartment whenever she felt like it. Yeah. So yeah, she wasn't like sticking to that rule. So I can't really say that that's the reason why she would have gone downstairs. She could be smoking upstairs in the bed. We don't know. Right. But then, then of course, you know, we know she calls nine one one, and I didn't put in here what time the nine. I haven't gotten to that part yet. But the nine one one call happened around one p.m., and um, then at one o seven they arrive on scene and pronounce him deceased. What That's, a mess, man. And then after the arrest, I've, I've, I'm just trying to keep a timeline here to keep us all so that we all can visualize this as y'all hear us talk about it. Because I know it gets confusing sometimes. I have to do timelines for my my job all the time. Well, to be honest with you, these help me just as much as it helps the viewers. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please do not forget to like and subscribe on your way out. And feel free to leave a comment. Have a blessed day.